Welcome everyone. I'm Dr. John White, Chief Medical Officer at WebMD, and you're watching Coronavirus in Context. Today, I want to talk about burnout, especially about burnout in physicians, how it impacts them personally and professionally. So to provide some insight, I've asked Dr. Peter Yellowlees. He is the Chief Wellness Officer at UC Davis Health. Dr. Yellowlees, thanks for joining me. Very nice to be here, John, and uh, looking forward to the conversation. You know, Medscape put out a report, we do it every year, and this year it's entitled Death by a Thousand Cuts, the 2021 Physician Burnout and Suicide Report. And one of the important findings was that burnout hasn't changed that much since last year, but it's increased slightly, particularly in women physicians. Does that surprise you? No, I don't think it does. I mean, I think, look, it's very hard to um, know how much uh, emphasis to put on almost any report around well-being or burnout at the, at the moment during a pandemic, because the reality of life is that, you know, all physicians have been affected by the pandemic, um, and uh, just as it has everybody else. Um, and we're going through essentially a disaster response cycle um, which we understand well and which is stressful. 20% of physicians stated that they experienced burnout for the first time this year as a result of COVID. But it's interesting that burnout among specialties has changed. And this year, it's actually critical care, rheumatology, and infectious disease that had the highest percentage of physicians with burnout. Just in case you're wondering, dermatology and plastic surgery were among the lowest. But how does this factor in, in, into burnout? Those are the specialties that, that we see primarily addressing the pandemic. Right, I think that's exactly right. And that's the reason. I mean, these are specialties that are particularly under fire and under pressure where their work has changed quite dramatically in many instances and where they're also increasingly concerned you know, about um, the potential spread of infection to their families, to other people, obviously uh, getting COVID themselves. Um, and uh, so it's, it's totally predictable. I think it's going to be interesting in the long term uh, as to how these specialties uh, manage and whether people in fact uh, want to go into them in the same numbers as they have in the past. They've all been pretty popular specialties in the past. But uh, whilst we know there's an increase in medical school applicants at the moment, um, I wonder if they'll be going into these particular specialties. Some people might be thinking, so physicians are burned out, everyone's burned out. But what we also saw in this report is how burnout impacts them professionally. They talked about its impact on when they become exacerbated by patients, that they're not listening to patients, they're making some errors in their judgment when they're tired and burned out. How concerned should we be about the impact of burnout on the delivery of care? I think it's a very important issue. And in fact, the issue that most of my colleagues speak about is the difficulty speaking to some patients, you know, who've actually had COVID, some patients who've even been ventilated and who refuse to admit that they've had COVID because they don't believe it exists. Um, and uh, where that itself has been extremely stressful for the physicians, this complete denial of reality that is, is, is going around and is a, essentially a mass delusion as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and so, and physicians are on the sharp end of that, uh, being uh, confronted with patients who are very sick, but refuse to accept the fact. Burnout often leads to depression, but is depression causing physicians to make more medical errors? So we know that both burnout and depression lead to increased medical errors. Um, I think you should probably think of burnout as being a sort of minor variant of depression, maybe a vulnerability factor for depression. I mean, burnout normally is a, a self-limiting uh, disorder. And, um, but it can certainly move on and lead and be a vulnerability factor so that people eventually develop depression or other psychiatric disorders or, or substance use uh, disorders. Um, so I think we should think of it as being a vulnerability factor primarily rather than a specific 
disorder in its own self. And we know that, that, that burnout is primarily caused by external organizational factors or stresses rather than internal factors related to the physicians. Well, you're the chief wellness officer. If these are external factors that are causing burnout, how do we fix it? Let's start off with how, first, how does the individual physician help address issues of burnout? And then more broadly, how does the healthcare system so I think the individual physician has to look at both um, their local organizational issues and um, their own personal issues. Now, we know that local leadership and good leadership uh, in small teams, in large teams, in organizations makes a huge difference. So simply acknowledging the great work that people are doing, thanking them, being aware of, of the sorts of uh, stresses that they're under and acknowledging those things is really important. Um, educating people about the normal process of essentially disaster recovery psychologically um, and uh, of, uh, of essentially the, the areas around disaster mental health uh, and what is normal, what is abnormal. I mean, we're going through a process where most of us, quite honestly, are adversely affected by this pandemic disaster. And it's not unreasonable to acknowledge that uh, and, and to then attempt to move on from that stage. Now, now if you move to at an individual level, uh, we know very clearly from multiple uh, literature evidence uh, factors that physicians as a group are highly resilient. Um, at, at entry to medical school, physicians are more resilient than equivalent graduate students elsewhere. Uh, less depressed and less burnt out. What the problem that physicians have is we're working uh, and we're squeezed in a really difficult system generally. Um, and, uh, and we develop burnout because of our systemic issues. Now, what that means is that we have to actually focus on the good resilience uh, capacity that we have and, uh, and relearn that and support that it's not that we're not resilient, but there's, but there's no reason why you can't improve your resilience and, and support yourself better. Well, give us some tips how to do that. Is it about meditation? Is it about trying to maximize sleep? We know it's about eating healthy. That's not always something that, that people can do it without you know, some preparation. What are your tips? So John, it's about all of those self-maintenance things, um, but particularly I think sleep, uh, really important to monitor your sleep, make sure you're getting enough. Exercise, we know that exercise is good for your mental health. There's no question about that. There's a lot of evidence to support that. So regular uh, walking, cycling, running, you can do all of those things uh, even while you're socially distanced. Um, obviously nurture your relationships, mm -hmm. spend time on your relationships. Um, I've got a number of, uh, of colleagues who actually are very pleased that their children are being homeschooled at the moment because they're spending much more time with their children than they would normally. Um, even if they're a married couple of physicians, they're able to sort of work their shifts around that. Um, so, so look at all of these, I think, um, self-care approaches. I was going to uh, ask you about self-care because people have been talking about that. But you pointed out physicians are, are good at resilience. Some people would argue physicians aren't good at self-care. There's a reason why we say, you know, the smart physician doesn't ascribe to the attitude of feel thyself. So we're not so good when it comes to managing our own health. Isn't that right? I think that that is unfortunately true. And I think that's one of the things that uh, physicians need to learn. I mean, we know that more than 30% of physicians don't have a primary care physician of their own. So one of the things we encourage people to do is go and see your primary care physician. Um, at least get yourself checked over. Do the, the, the maintenance that you advise your patients to have with your own physician. Uh, so I think you're absolutely right. I think we have to use less denial about our own health um, and, and focus more on that, quite honestly, in this situation. What do you find is the biggest mistake clinicians make when it comes to burnout? Is it a pull yourself up by your own bootstraps approach? Is it denial? Is it, I'll deal with that later, I'm too busy? From your experience, what really has, has been the, the key challenge in, in getting people to recognize this as physicians? I think the biggest mistake that physicians have is that they continue 
what we were all taught in medical school, which is that if you want to succeed in something, you just work harder. And so you do more, you work a few extra hours that you can plow through and overcome almost anything by just working more and longer hours and harder. And that's obviously not true, uh, but it's what we're taught and it's what we're trained to believe. And it's what a lot of our residency programs are based on. Um, and I think we've got to get away from that mantra, but that is unfortunately a very common belief that physicians hold. Uh, and, and in reality, what we need to be doing is working smarter, not harder. I want you to take out your crystal ball. I see you have an apple. <laughs> That's good for self-care. There self you are, I'm, I'm looking after myself. Yeah. <laughs> take out your crystal ball. Tell me what next year's report on burnout and suicide is going to show us. I think that it's probably going to be similar rates to now, but probably not much less. So I'm not expecting dramatic improvements. Um, I think, you know, our, I hope obviously that we'll be through most of the pandemic by then um, and that our work will have returned more to what is a new normal. Um, I think there are potentially some really big silver linings associated with COVID. I think um, our learning to use telemedicine and equivalent technologies for patients is actually going to be really good for us. And there is uh, increasing amounts of evidence to show that despite Zoom fatigue, um, using uh, video for, with patients is actually good for our mental health as physicians. And certainly we know that patients love it. Um, so I think that's important. I think a lot of health systems have discovered that actually transparent honesty with all of their staff is a really important matter. Uh, and, and certainly that's coming through fairly clearly. So I think we're going to have uh, more communication across and within our workplaces, which I think will be helpful as a, as a consequence of COVID. Um, and I think there's been an increased emphasis on the importance of healthcare workers as essential workers and as people who have a difficult job, potentially a dangerous and life-threatening job on occasions, um, and, uh, and who need that validated. So I think there are some positive things that will come out of COVID that will help physicians. Um, but I wouldn't expect an immediate increase, improvement, unfortunately, in, in burnout rates because th those are very slow to change. I want to thank you for sharing your insights today, as well as for all that you're doing in order to help address issues of burnout. Well, thank you very much indeed. It's a real pleasure to be here. And uh, I greatly appreciate Medscape's focus on burnout because it is really important for the profession. And thank you for watching.